Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, and we're going to be talking about John MacArthur and his health and some other things coming up next. All right, hey everybody, welcome. Welcome. A little later than normal. Um, and some personal issues today. Uh, so pray for that. Sin is real. And I am no exception. And uh, God is good. But things happen in this fallen world. But Jesus has overcome the world. He promises tribulation. Trial. But fear not. I've overcome the world. That's what he says. So that's helpful. I hope that's helpful. I hope that peace finds you. That hope that only comes through Christ. Um, because I'm a sinner and you're a sinner and our only hope is the Lord Jesus. Not John MacArthur, uh, not Charles Spurgeon, not R.C. Sproul or Steve Lawson or H.B. Charles or Vody Bauckham or Jonathan Edwards or John Calvin or Luther or Aquinas or Augustine or Polycarp or anybody, anybody, I mean, anybody, my point, anybody, or Beth Moore or Priscilla Schreier or Julie Royce. None of these people are our salvation. None of these people are going there. Any and every one of these people are going to let you down. They're going to fail. They're going to mess up. And MacArthur's no different. Uh, the difference with the Christian, and I've been telling this more to my children lately, is the Christian admits the fault. We admit it. And we say, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? We don't just hide it like the world. We don't just hide it. So, MacArthur's back. Um, he's was gone. Uh, he's been ill off and on. He had COVID, although that's not really official, but it's known within the church. Um, I think it's official somewhere. But anyway, I think he still did a fine job staying, keeping the church open. That was great. Um, stood against a lot of things, a lot of the county, L.A. County and all these other things. Gavin Newsom, the mayor, just lots and lots of trash. Uh, against just a basic church that we all know now masks don't work. It came from Wuhan. The J6 riot insurrection wasn't really real. It's all whipped up lies. I mean, the last couple of years, I mean, the whole like, you know, the difference between a conspiracy theory and fact is about six months. And we see that. And I'm, I'm thankful for the churches that stayed. I'm thankful for the churches that stood against the tide, uh, whether in Canada or Australia or here uh, or in England, other places. Um, and it's shameful a lot that didn't. Uh, because, you know, they didn't really need to close a lot of times. But, you know, I digress. So MacArthur's fallen on. He's been healthier. <laughs> and he's, he, as he says, he's been he's not been this age before. And it's a clip I want to show you. Um, but I also want to show you um, something from one of our favorites, one of my favorites, <laughs> Julie Royce, uh, who is, you know, a person and pretends to be unbiased and pretends to be some defender of truth and yet is a lady preacher and, and submits to that sort of uh, ideology of, of female preachers uh, supporting Beth Moore and Karen Swallow Pryor. And, you know, these women aren't the worst women in the world. Certainly not. They're not the best women in the world either. And it has nothing to do with them being female or sexism and all these things that people claim. It's simply that this is what the text says, right? This is what the scripture says. You know, men or elders, not not even all men, right? There's a very, very small that, I mean, first of all, you have to want to do it. And that's one of the qualifications. Not to mention you have to be trained in some capacity. You have to desire it. You have to have these certain things, not a new convert, children who obey, that sort of thing. Like a lot of guys don't fit this model. Um, and, you know, I question even my own <laughs> legitimacy sometimes just because of my own sin in my own heart. And it's crazy. Uh, but the point is most men don't even fit this. Right. But there's a lot of women who, you know, oh, it's egalitarian. They don't use the words. They'll still say they're conservative or they're Bible or they're evangelical or something, but your actions always betray you. Your words are meaningless. If your, your actions don't line up, your words are meaningless. If your actions do not line up. And so that's, that's no different than anything else. So, uh, Julie Royce here, great gal. She's here. Uh, 
as if over-the-top reverence for MacArthur wasn't weird enough. Here's the Kool-Aid. I mean, Fresca. They're drinking at ShepCon right now. She just can't help but troll. Yeah, he likes Fresca. Yeah, okay. He likes Fresca. Cool. You know, I used to like Fresca when I was a kid. He still likes Fresca. Great. You can't see that. Why can't you see that? Did it pop up? Oh, it popped up. Excuse me. Yeah, it popped up. There you go. And they have a little thing, and here it is. And here's the thing. The Kool-Aid, right? Let's just see this. Don't drink the Kool-Aid. That's just a funny reference, right? That's not anything really, like, scary or evil, right? Oh, wait. What's this? Expression drinking, drink the Kool-Aid was coined by horrifying tragedy. Happened 40 years ago this weekend. 1968, it says. 78. This was Jim Jones' cult with laced with poison that he forced all his cult members to drink. So Jules, sweetheart, this isn't at all drinking the Kool-Aid. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, a bunch of people died. Hundreds of people died. Uh, don't drink the Kool-Aid. Yeah, this is the Kool-Aid. I mean, Fresca. Like, does it need to be said? No. Do they need to have it? No. But like, what's wrong with this versus any other little marketing thing? Oh, it's idolatry. Oh, it's reverence. I mean, shut up. Just shut up. So what? Get over it. Get over yourself. Like, it's just, it's just dumb. It's just dumb. And for you to compare this to drinking Kool-Aid, like a, like poisoned Kool-Aid, like that's, and I know the phrase, I get it, but it's just too much. It's just too much. Anyway, so this is Bible Thumping Wingnut is his channel. And this is a Q&A real quick. MacArthur was supposed to preach on Wednesday opening. Steve Lawson preached instead. Austin Duncan, who I think is going to take over for MacArthur personally long term. They'll probably have like a three or four team guy. They'll, they'll alternate maybe a, a week, you know, in and out and out. And then they'll maybe like settle on three. And then I would think they'll call Mac, uh, Mac Duncan after probably a year or two. The church will lose people, uh, no doubt. And I don't say that. It'll just lose people. I mean, it, it, it'll happen uh, if you if you're not anticipating that or expecting that. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, it's just going to, and that's no fault of anyone's. It's just the nature of a pastor being there. Not even a MacArthur, but somebody who's been there for ten or twenty years. So often, the next guy gets fired. I mean, I'm very weary of, of churches and things I've looked at in the past, where you know, the pastor's been here for twenty years, thirty years. He's just retiring. Like, I don't want to go there. I'll get fired because the human nature is, hey, he's not John. Right. Richard's not John, for example. So whoever follows after MacArthur, it's going to be very difficult. They're don't they're going to do. And I did some uh, work on that. If you want to look at those, <clears throat> looked at Julie Roy's last year as well with uh, her critiques. And, you know, some of it, it's valid. I'm not trying to throw Julie under the bus completely. Uh, she does have some valid points here and there. Uh, and I'm not saying MacArthur and all these other stuff, but that's abuse. And this video is not about that. Ultimately, MacArthur is a titanic figure. Uh, and whether you disagree with him on one or more things, you know, he's a premillennial uh, dispensationalist, uh, five point Calvinist. Uh, he's a uh, cessationist. He's a uh, complementarian. He's a young earth creationist. You know, a lot of those things are flashpoints, but even if you disagree with most of those things, <clears throat> which some people do, you can at least appreciate still this desire to have the scripture be the authority that Jesus is the standard. Because we've disagreed on some of these things, right? Over the years, over the centuries. But at the end of the day, MacArthur is a titanic figure. He's been in a pastor for 53 years at the same church. Like that's that's no small, <clears throat> that's no small matter at all. <clears throat> Excuse me. Not at all. And so seeking to stand against the culture, seeking to stand against and for the stand against the world and for the word of God. Uh, and just trying to be faithful. He's imperfect. I'm not saying he's perfect. Nobody is. And so for people to kind of act like, well, yeah, you're so much reverence and you just love him so much. Like, yeah, he can sin. He absolutely has. And, and he does. And, and, and anyway, I appreciate MacArthur, if nothing else, uh, even if you don't agree with all, him on a number of issues, um, he still seeks to be faithful. And if you're walking with Christ, you, even if you disagree with one or two of these things or whatever main points, you can still appreciate his work um i don't agree with him on everything and you know at the end of the day 
He's still a, he's still a man who's faithfully preaching the word of God, trying to do what God has given him to do with the resources he has and everything else. So he's here. He didn't get to preach because of uh, illness. <clears throat> he hasn't preached since January 1st. He only preached the first service, I guess. The second service, he didn't. Uh, Bible Thump and Wingnut Guy, I forget his name. Uh, he does a lot of, it's, it's almost like a MacArthur channel. <laughs> he, it's, it's almost all he does. Um, good or bad, whatever. But he has a lot of stuff and updates and things. So this is kind of an update, health update on that too. But looking at him, he does, MacArthur does a Q&A here on the second day, which is yesterday, Thursday. And then of course, today's Friday. He's supposed to preach tonight. I'm going to try and watch that. Uh, maybe I'll have a, a quick report on that too. We'll see. So here we go. A little Q&A. We'll speed it up. But MacArthur, he's seen better days. He really has. Um, you know, he's 83. <laughs> and I'm not mocking him. I'm not saying it. It's just, it's just, you know, it's hard. And there's a level of like, well, when, when do you retire? I mean, Somebody like a Chuck Smith died uh, basically preaching, uh, more or less, and he was, he was 86. I know David Jeremiah. I know um, uh, Chuck Swindle, Charles Stanley. A lot of these guys, they're in their 80s, and you know they're just going to preach till they're dead. And it's like, I hope, I hope MacArthur finishes strong. He seems slower than normal. I think it might be prescription stuff, although he had some sort of blockage um, earlier in January. And so they had to have surgery and it was usually six months is what Duncan says here. I like Austin Duncan a lot. I think he's, I think he's easily the best candidate for the job, but anyway. And we'll, we'll get into all of it here, but I just feel like it's appropriate that, uh, you know, leadership is influence. So, <laughs> okay, I'm ready. John, we are so glad you're here. Thank you. And that, in and of itself, is a providence. Uh, <clears throat> you are probably not supposed to be here as far as recovery time goes. Uh, most people wait about six months for recovery. You're six weeks, I think, classic MacArthur. Total jock, total warrior, total lion. So, but you're here. So give the men an update. What has Providence done in these last few months? How are you feeling? Uh, are you done with extreme motorsports? Just <laughs> let, us, let us know where you're at, MacArthur. Well, uh, I feel great. I've, I felt good, uh, really, generally speaking, before it became apparent that I had uh, some arteries blocked. Um, and coming out of that, that was completely successful, for which I'm thankful. And since then, I've, I felt great. The challenge for me has been to handle the medication. I'm, yeah. I'm not a good drug addict. <laughs> Which, by the way, I think I think that's part of his. He's he seems even slower. I have a friend who goes to Grace. Uh, I was texting. I was like, "Is he a little slower than normal?" And he's like, "Ah, oh, he's an old man." You know, he's joking. But I MacArthur's very spry, and his 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 wits are about him. But I think the drugs, um, pharmaceuticals, uh, are really. You know, I take a Benadryl sometimes, and I'm just like out. Right. And not necessarily slurring, but I'm just like beside myself. And so it's the only thing that helps my allergies, but you don't need to know that. I think, I think that might be part of it here. He is, he is moving a little bit, a little fidgety. And so again, I hope I pray, you know, he's back on his feet and he can finish, you know, the next however many months or years God has left for him uh, to stay strong and, 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 you know, die in the pulpit, I guess is probably the best way he would want to go. Uh, I've, I've heard him say similar things. So anyway, Back to this. We'll watch this for another minute or two. You walked. You walked into a pastors' meeting. You walked into a pastors' meeting a few weeks ago. Uh, this is a very memorable moment. And he sat down and said, "This meeting is brought to you by Pfizer," <laughs> <laughs> which, coming from MacArthur, is a very meaningful sentence. Yeah. So there's obviously there's some recovery time. Um, it just turned out too that I was in the hospital ten days because they did two procedures wow. and there was a weekend that they weren't operating so it just made me in languish in the hospital for 10 days you have to recover from that um yeah so and i've never been this age before <laughs> so i'm trying to figure out what to do with it um but yeah i, I feel i feel great every day I, I get a little it's hard too because i remember my grandma um saying one time she she died when she was 88 87 88 uh, so a couple years older than macarthur and great great old lady english lady and uh 
I remember her talking to my mom, talking about some shoes. This was years ago. She was probably like in her 70s at this point, mid-70s. You know, so I'm whatever, 15 or 12 or however old I was. And uh, I remember her talking to my mom and she's like, I just, I don't know, I've got these shoes. I just, I, I don't really don't like these shoes. They just make me look like an old lady, make me feel like an old lady. And she's like, I am an old lady. <laughs> You know, and it's, I think you really reached to a point because, I mean, I'm going to be 40 this year, which is just crazy to think about. I know, I know. Uh, my hair is not very gray, although it is a little thinning. I'd rather get gray than thin, to be honest. But, you know, sure, I, I look better than some, but I don't feel 40 at all, right? And, and I think a lot of people, 30, 40, 50, especially you like, you know, you're about 25 and you just kind of hit this point and you're just mentally until, you know, something breaks. But anyway, back to MacArthur. I think it's age is a very interesting, very weird kind of thing. A little stronger, a little yeah. better. Um, a few months from now, probably back to yeah. normal or even better than normal. In fact, when I went in for the procedure, the surgeon said to me, were you bedridden at home before this incident? And I said, no. He said, were you on a walker? And I said, no, I was playing golf. <laughs> so he said, you have a very strong heart. Yeah. So uh, in fact, when the procedure was over, he commented on good, the health and the strength of my heart. So that aspect of it, um, the Lord was kind. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't want to overstay my welcome, but um, I'm happy to still be here. Uh, we are we are more than happy that you're still with us. And yeah. yeah. And since I've never been this age before and don't know how to handle it. Uh, I had a run-in with an immovable object, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I tried to take it on with my my arm and my yeah. head, yeah. and oh. um, I was unsuccessful. Yeah. So there's a fracture in one of the small oh, bones in the wrist, yeah. uh, which He's probably got a bandage put me so. into a very difficult situation because I can't turn the pages of a Bible, Right. So, um, along with a lot of other things <laughs> I can't do. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out what the future looks like, but yeah. I want to speak tomorrow night. Uh, because I've got a lot on my heart, so they're 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 doing tutorials with me to, to help me swipe an iPad. <laughs> this is a sure sign of the end times. <laughs> uh, that's good. It goes on for a few more minutes. Um, yeah, it's so funny. I mean, just generational. Like I always use an iPad mainly just because it's it's easier for editing uh, and just. I just don't want to waste paper. I'm not as organized, I guess, in that way. But it's funny. I mean, there's nothing wrong. I like I like books. I've got books behind me. I've got thousands of books. Uh, I don't think paper books are going away. But anyway, I hope this was helpful. I just wanted to give a quick update on MacArthur. Um, I do appreciate him, even if I don't agree with everything. You probably don't agree with everything either. That's okay. Uh, we still are called to sharpen each other. We're called to be biblical. Uh, and, and seek to understand the scripture as best as possible. Obviously, call out sin when there's sin. Commend righteousness and goodness when that is the case. Uh, and really just, you know, appreciate guys like MacArthur. You know, there's others, like I said, Swindle and uh, Charles Stanley, not not Andy. Uh, <laughs> uh, MacArthur called out Andy Stanley in that little Q&A too. Um, but that's nothing new. We should be appreciative of these long, long pastors. You can listen to MacArthur's uh, sermons, all of his sermons. Uh, I often will. A lot of them are like old, you know, 70s, 80s, because he preached, you know, through Acts or something like that. I think he preached through Acts in like the early 70s. And so, you know, that's something you can go for free, right? On the Grace to You app, you can go to their website. And it's, you know, you learn, whether you're a preacher or teacher, whether you're just a follower of Christ. Um, I've listened to a lot of MacArthur. He's probably the most influential on my life overall as far as uh kind of modern preachers and again i don't agree with everything and that's okay because you know we have our own interpretations in one sense uh but always wanting to 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 pray through and understand the text what's going on in the text and how it works for us today and application and things and some of that differs and uh you know the end times or or uh, soteriology ecclesiology uh, eschatology so anyway um yeah i hope this is helpful and if you uh, I haven't subscribed. I would appreciate it. I'm trying to get to a thousand, man. I'm trying to get to. The, I'm trying to get there. If you haven't, if you're not subscribed, I want you to ask yourself, why, why? Because it's free, right? It's free. It doesn't cost anything, and it would just give me warm fuzzies inside, uh, kind of like a burning in the bosom, like the Mormons talk about. But that's it for now. 
I hope this was helpful, like I said, and uh, we've got a Contra Talk coming tomorrow live. Hopefully we won't have any issues. We had we were going to try to do it last week, and it stormed like crazy, 80 mile an hour winds, and my guest, he's a pastor, Wendell Phelps, um, his power was knocked out. And so he was at the revival, uh, Asbury revival, so-called revival, let's call that. And um, we were going to talk. So we're going to do that talk tomorrow live. So if you want to tune in for that at 11 Central, 11 Central, if you're watching this after, of course, you can still drop a comment, ask a question. Hopefully we'll be able to answer it at some point, either him or I. So that's it. Y'all be against the world for the world. We'll see you.